Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now today I'm going to be sharing how to use my new lunar paste and my favorite way to apply it onto your cards and all the different tips that goes along with that like best ways to keep it, drying times and things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into this. My favorite way to apply this paste is using a blending tool. Now, the reason why I love this so much is because we designed it so the blending tools fit right inside here, like it fits just perfectly. So if you need to, you can go right into there and get your paste out of there and of course use it straight from the jar, which I think is really awesome and you can swipe it off to get any of the excess back into there. Now, I wanna give a few tips and tricks for when you're using these. Now, whenever I'm done using a sponge and it's loaded up with my paste, I like to take it off to the side and you can see I have one scratch piece a paper towel that I kind of keep these on so it doesn't mess up my desk. And after I'm done with the paste, I start wiping it off to the side once I'm done for the day. That is just so that it doesn't really like get too dried on here and clumped. You can see this red one, I didn't do that. And you can see in some places where it's a lot thicker, it's kind of crusty. Whereas here, I wiped it off and it's kind of nice and soft still. You want it to stay nice and soft, so be sure to get all of your paste out before you're done working for the day. And all these I did that with, and they are pretty nice and soft. And of course, after a little while, it's probably going to get hard anyway. But the nice part about these foams is you can buy them in large replacement packs. And then of course, like if it gets a little bit clumpy like it did on this red one, all you have to do is peel that off, discard the first one, and put on a new foam and you're ready to keep going. So it's really awesome, inexpensive if you do need to change them out, but a great tool that's not gonna get ruined. For the first technique, I'm gonna start off with this sweater weather stencil and we're gonna do a little bit of kind of layering this up. Now, one of the reasons why I absolutely love using the paste with a blending tool like this is just because of the drying time and the really ease of application. It doesn't use a ton of paste. So let me just go into here. I need to kind of reload it onto my tool. And then when there's a little bit too much, I always like to just take it into my lid here and press that down. That's gonna get any excess off so I can start right onto my project. And then I can go right in onto my project and start my blending. Now, whenever I go into here with this, I like to treat it kind of as I would an ink because if I'm just going to go in with the pouncing motion, the cool part about this texture paste is it will actually keep the texture of your pouncing, which I don't really want. I want it to be a little bit smoother when I go in. So I'm gonna go in and just do it like this. But I've also blended out like a scenescape where I used grass and I did use the pouncing motion. So it's really up to you what kind of look you want. So I've just reapplied and I'll keep continuing all of my background. It's really super easy to do this. Like I said, it reminds me almost of ink and just that ease of application to get that color on is amazing. So once I've got my color all applied there, I can lift it off and there you see that beautiful and stunning shine that we get and like it was super simple. Now whenever I'm doing this right away, I like to go in with a little bit of water, spray down my stencil and spray down my surface. I find that this gives me a little bit more work time to clean it off because wetting it down is gonna make it not dry as quickly. I'm gonna go in with my heat it tool here and just show you guys. All I'm gonna do is heat it for a couple seconds and just after that little heating, look, it's already dry and none of that is gonna come off on your fingers, which I really love. That recipient is not gonna get any of that shine, but it is so stunning which is amazing. The cool part about that drying time is I can then go in and use the next layer. Whereas if I did it an actual paste, which you totally can do with this, it would just take a little bit longer. So that's why this is my favorite. I'm gonna go in with my stencil and just shift it a little bit so that the other area is over top and then I'm gonna go in with another color. So here I'm gonna use a little bit of clear skies and add that down. And again, wipe it off on the side, get it all over my tool, and then I can start my blending. All right, so I can't make it all the way to the edge with the stencil shifted like this, so I'm going to lift it off, and again, this is where the drying time comes in handy, because I'm gonna go in and dry this really quickly. That's already dry, and then I'm going to go in and line up my stencil exactly with how it was, and then I can also move it upwards like this, 
line it up here, and then add a little bit more paste down and continue my pattern. So look at all that amazing two-tone shine. That's what's so cool about applying it with a blending tool like this, is if you heat it with your heat tool, it takes seconds to dry and then you're on to your next layer. So if you want to use several stencils or do stencil layering, it's so easy to do with this, which I just love. And you get such a crisp, clear image, even on that black cardstock with this paste. So I'm gonna take, again, the slippery and wet paste and we'll go in with my blending tool again and all I need to do is dip my tool in there, get a little bit of paste going. And again, if you grab a little bit too much, it's not a big deal. You can always just wipe it off in the side. And then I'm gonna go onto the edge of this with my blending tool and try to get on as much of that amazing color paste as I can. So get a little bit of a thicker layer going. And if you want to, dabbing it on will give you a nice thick layer and then you can kind of swipe it a little bit to get rid of that texture. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't have like gold or silver cardstock all around my craft room. So having something like this where I can match it to whatever color I already used on my project, whether I wanted to do the clear skies or the slippery and wet, and then the ability to just do it on the edges to not waste any product. But I just love this stunning gold edge that it gives that matches our project completely. I'm gonna use just the Sending Hug Sentiment from the Sentimental Flowers stamp set. I'm gonna grab my acrylic block, and then I can stamp it down onto my stark white cardstock using some Jet Black Archival ink. And then I'm just gonna go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors and roughly just fussy cut right around this sentiment just because we want it to be as close as possible so that all of that amazing shine from the background can still be seen. All right, so I kept this card super simple, but I just love how that color layering looked and I didn't wanna cover it up too much. But of course you could create a background like this in any color, on any color cardstock. It stands out and shines really beautifully. And again, I just love that the drying time is so simple and that it almost feels kind of in that cardstock instead of being a ton of texture. Now next I wanted to share a really fun technique you could do with your 3D embossing folder. So here I'm using the Enchanted Vines from Altenew. What I'm going to do is go in with a little bit of my paste. So here I'm gonna use a little bit of the Later Gator paste. I love this color. And I'll go in, grab some of it from the jar with my blending tool again. And then this time I'm going to tap off any excess. So for this first layer, I'm gonna go in and go into all of the smaller kind of fine areas of the embossing folder. Let me grab out my plastic sheet just so I don't get it all over my desk. And this, you want to be pretty liberal with the paste on your blending tool. I'm just going to go in and get into all of those areas, kind of pressing my sponge down so that it gets into the under layer of the embossing as well, the kind of debossed areas. And it just creates this beautiful layer of mirrored cardstock for your first layer. Now for the second layer, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of slippery and wet, and we want this to be kind of not a lot of paste on our tool, right? We want it to kind of sink in. And then I'm just going to go in and start by really just lightly going over top of this, which is just going to touch it to those raised areas. Because it's that 3D embossing folder, it's just going to touch the raised areas of your embossed design and add that color to the top layer. So here I'm just really lightly, and when I say lightly, I mean like barely even touching the cardstock and going in to apply that kind of golden yellow color all over that background to the most raised areas. So when I tilt that in the light, you'll see that it touched all of those top layers and gives that really beautiful golden color up there while keeping all that beautiful green mirrored color underneath it because we pressed it into those areas. And I can't repeat this enough, but it's been seconds since I applied this and it's already dry to the touch, which is amazing. All right, so I'm adhering my little hello die down. I cut this out of just white cardstock and stacked it up. I was gonna do the same kind of shiny background using my blending tool and then die cutting it out. So that's another option, but I thought there was enough shine on here with that beautiful background today. So I kept it super simple to finish it off. And then just to remind you guys, once you're done, again, kind of blot off your tools, make sure your pastes are out and all the color is out of there and you should be good to go for the next time. And again, if it does get a little bit clumpy in there, which usually it doesn't, if you empty it out like this, you can always replace the foams. 
All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video sharing my favorite way to apply the Lunar Paste for an amazing dry time that's super fast and that same stunning effect on your cards. So give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Click that subscribe button down below to never miss another card making and crafting video like this one from me. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.